So I did pretty good as a kid. I mean, uh, I had a roof over my head. I had toys. I never really went hungry or anything like that. So a lot of the things that made it a house were in place for me, you know? But at the same time, a lot of the things that would have made it a home were not in place for me. Maybe you know exactly what I mean. A lot of people do. And I bring that up for a couple of reasons. And one of the reasons is because I want you to know that if that's the situation that you've come from, it's okay. I mean, because look, here we are, you and me, we've got room to grow and move forward from here. So whatever happened before, it's okay. But I also want to bring it up because I think it's an interesting learning opportunity. I mean, the deal is that you know as well as I do that there are certain things that make a house a home and it has absolutely nothing to do with the two by fours or whether or not there's food in the kitchen. Those things are great. We give thanks for them, but that's not what makes a house a home. It has everything to do with people showing up, making a decision and doing something about it. Decision and action. That's what makes a house a home. And as it turns out, that's what makes everything worthwhile, everything worthwhile. I mean, it's not a church because it's a building. It's a church because people show up and decide to engage in a certain way. It's not a disco because they have a mirrored ball. It's a disco because people show up and dance. It's not a school because of the building or the desks or the chalkboard or whatever. It's a school when learning happens. You and I have both been in a lot of positions where it looked like a school, but I didn't learn anything. You know what I mean? For it to be worthwhile, it takes decision and action. Every time, that's just how all of this stuff works. And that's a big deal when you think about the way, the fact that so much of our life is designed to train us, to condition us, whatever word you want to use, to make us not decide and not act, but instead to be some kind of consumer, to be totally passive, to be totally entertained at all times. And yeah, I get it. I'm sitting here making an internet video for you. I grasp the irony, but I'm hoping it doesn't stop here for either one of us. Because the deal is that there's a lot of ways you can sit and be entertained, to sit and consume. We are trained to consume over and over again and all the time to the point where a question like, what's in it for me, sounds like a valid question. It sounds like a logical question. It sounds like something that winners do or whatever. What's in it for me? But it turns out if everything is worthwhile when people show up and do something, when people show up and give, Asking a question like what's in it for me turns out to be pretty dumb. It's kind of a coward's question. Because what's in it for me means how can I consume in this situation? And that is so boring. What if we asked what's in it from me? What can you do? How can you contribute? What if it's not about being passive? What if it's about sharing something because that's what makes everything worthwhile. So here's the deal. Instead of waiting for life to happen to you, I want you to start happening to your life. And you can start with that question. What's in it from me? Let's see where that takes you. You got this kiddo.